Now that you have the Greek alphabet down, it's time to turn our attention to the pronunciation of words. The Greeks are going to take all the letters in the alphabet, they're going to put them together to form words. We need to know how to pronounce those words. This is a pretty easy chapter. There's a couple of new things we're going to be learning. We're going to be learning about diphthongs and breathing marks and accents and punctuation, and they're not very hard though. But we're going to spend most of our time in this chapter working on syllabification. We're going to work on learning how to look at a Greek word, to break it into its syllables so that you can pronounce them. And the reason this chapter is pretty easy is because uh, Greek and English syllabification is very, very similar. In fact, what I'm going to encourage you to do, if you're a native English speaker especially, is just, I'll be showing you the words, I'll be saying them, and just go with your gut. Just kind of say the sounds in a way that is natural to you. And more times than not, you'll actually be saying them properly, okay? So it's a pretty easy chapter because it's a natural chapter. Now, of course, there's always some who want the rules. Okay, well, we will also cover the rules of syllabification and uh, also going to look at vocabulary a little as well. So that's what we're doing in this lesson. And by the way, in case you're wondering what's going on, yes, a winter storm did blow through Washugo. It's early spring here and some crazy storms can come through. But it'll probably be bright and sunny tomorrow, so we'll see what it's like then. All right, let's start on those new things we have to learn, starting initially with diphthongs. What's a diphthong? A diphthong is when you have two vowels that make one sound. In other words, the two vowels are pronounced together. And the basic rule of diphthongs is that the second vowel is always an iota or an upsilon. In other words, you're looking through the text and you see a word and there's two vowels together. If the second is an iota or an upsilon, you know that those two vowels form a diphthong and they're going to be pronounced a certain way. If the second vowel is not in yoder or upsilon, then they do not form a diphthong, okay? So that's what a diphthong is. Two vowels that are pronounced with one sound. So let's take a look at the chart and learn the diphthongs. If you see an alpha and yoda together, you know it's a diphthong. Second vowel is in yoda. The alpha yoda diphthong is pronounced I, like in the English word isle. And so the Greek word that means I raise or take up is pronounced iro, iro. You can ignore those marks over the iota. We're going to talk about them in a second. The second diphthong is epsilon iota. It's pronounced a, like in the English word eight. And so the Greek word for if is pronounced a. Omicron iota is pronounced oi, like in the word oil. And so the Greek word for house is pronounced oikia, oikia. Alpha Upsilon also forms a diphthong. It's pronounced ow, like in sauerkraut. And so the Greek word for he is autos, autos. Omicron Upsilon is a diphthong that is pronounced u, like in soup. And so the Greek word meaning and not is pronounced ude, ude. Upsilon iota is pronounced we, as in sweet. And so the Greek word for sun is pronounced weos, weos. And then the last two diphthongs, epsilon, upsilon, and eta, upsilon, are pronounced the same way. They're pronounced u, like in feud. And so the Greek word for immediately is pronounced euthus, euthus. And that other word is pronounced euxenin, euxenin. You'll notice that in even pronouncing those words, you are already starting to syllabify the words. It's a pretty natural thing. But again, let's go back and review that last column, okay? The words are pronounced iro, say it with me out loud, iro, a, oikia, autos, ude, weos, euthus, euxenin. While I'm talking about diphthongs, I probably ought to mention something called improper diphthongs. Every once in a while when you're reading on the Greek text, you'll see either an alpha, eta, or omega with an iota underneath it, okay? The, the two letters together are called an improper diphthong. The iota is called an iota subscript. There are, for various reasons, the iota has gone underneath it. If you were learning traditional Greek, it would be important to notice the iota subscripts because they're telling you something about how the word functions. But in terms of what we're doing here, just notice it's not a typo and the iota subscript is not pronounced, okay? 
So the alpha iota subscript is pronounced like an alpha and so forth and so on, okay? But those are improper diphthongs. So that's it for diphthongs. The second thing had to do with something called breathing marks, okay? Every Greek word that begins with a vowel or a row is going to have a breathing mark. The breathing mark is going to be just a little symbol, a little character over that initial vowel. And there's two kinds of breathing marks. The first is the smooth breathing mark. The smooth breathing mark looks like a backward C. It's over that initial vowel and it is not pronounced. In other words, it's not affecting pronunciation at all. So you go, what's it even there for? Well, long discussion on that, some other time perhaps. But you can just, in terms of pronunciation, you can ignore the smooth breathings. They don't add anything to the pronunciation of the word. However, you also will find a rough breathing. And in fact, any word that begins with a row does have a rough breathing. The rough breathing is shaped like a regular C. It's over that initial vowel or initial row, and it adds an H sound to the word. So for example, if this word didn't have a breathing mark, it would be pronounced uper, uper. But this word does have a rough breathing, and so it's pronounced huper, huper. You got that initial H sound into it, okay? So smooth breathing, backward C, not pronounced. Rough breathing, C shape, adds an H sound to the word, okay? Now, a couple of the little odds and ends. If you have a word that begins with a capital single vowel, the breathing mark is going to be in front of that single vowel. So Jesus' name is Iesus. It happens to have a smooth breathing. And so that smooth breathing comes before the iota. And also, if you have a word that begins with the diphthong, the breathing is over the second vowel of the diphthong. So this is iteo. Okay, I teo. If it were a rough breathing, it would be high teo, but it's a smooth, so it's I teo. Okay, so that's it for breathing marks. The third new thing has to do with uh, accents. <laughs> accents. And an accent is going to be a little mark that is over the vowel of the stressed syllable. In other words, you can have words with multiple syllables. Which syllable gets the stress? Well, the accent mark is telling you which syllable gets the stress. Originally in Greek, in biblical times, we believe that the, the accents were pitch. In other words, depending upon the accent, your voice would go up a little in pitch or down a little or up and down. And that's basically the way it is in modern Greek. But especially for English speakers, most Greek teachers are content to simply say, place stress on the syllable that has the accent and don't worry about musical pitch. In English, we use a, a stress system for accents. We don't use a pitch system. And so for most English speakers, unless you're really musical, I guess, uh, it's hard to get the right pitch uh, going up and down. So again, Basically, what we do in this class is that whatever syllable has the accent, make sure you stress that when you say it. But let me give an example of what they look like. There are three accents. The first one is the acute. And so this word is pronounced iteo. So originally, it would have been something like iteo, where the pitch would have gone up. But we just say iteo. The second accent is a grave, which means originally the pitch went down. So this would have been theos, theos. And a circumflex is a third accent. Again, your pitch would have gone up and down. And so Jesus' name would have been Iesus, Iesus. But again, I'm not very good at that. And so I just use stress like most people. I teo theos a Iesus. Now what's important about accents is that you are consistent, okay? Uh, especially when you're trying to memorize Greek words. If you one day you say it apostolos, and the next day you say it apostolos, I mean, you can hardly tell it's the same word, right? So for consistency's sake, you really need to, to make sure the accent is on the stressed syllable when you say these words and just be consistent, okay? All right, so that's it for accents. And finally, before we get to slabification, uh, I need to talk a little bit about punctuation. And then I'm gonna show you a song that's got some punctuation, so we need to cover it. In Greek, there are four punctuation marks, and the two are like English and two are different. In Greek, if you have a comma, it looks just like the English comma, 
And in Greek, if you have a period, it looks just like the English period. However, if you, in Greek you have a semicolon, it looks like a raised dot, okay? So this is a semicolon in Greek. It'd be a, a major break in thought if you see one of these in a sentence. And fourthly, the Greek question mark looks just like the English semicolon. So if you see what looks like an English semicolon in Greek, you know it's the Greek question mark, okay? So those are the four uh, punctuations that we have in Greek. Two are the same in English and two are different. Okay, we had to cover that stuff in order to be able to pronounce the words in these songs properly. So, okay, that's done. Let's move on. We're going to learn uh, to pronounce words using the song, Jesus Loves Me. And again, you can get the sheet music and the sound files from the website if you'd like to have them. But uh, we're going to work through this. And initially, I'm going to show you a set of screens where I've put hyphens between the syllables. And it'll just, it'll help you say the words. And then I'm going to go to a set of screens where there are no hyphens, and that's the one that you need to practice on, okay? All right. So let's go to the Jesus Loves Me song. And I will, after I go through each line, I'll tell you what the words mean. But let's say these together. The first word is pronounced ha, okay? Omicron with a rough breathing, so you have an H. It's ha. And then Jesus' name is e a s u s. E A S U S. And then me, me. And then the fourth word is agapa, agapa. Okay, those four words actually are the Jesus, me, he loves. You're going to find out eventually the Greek word order is not the same as English, so this is fine Greek. And you're also going to find out that the word ha means the. And in Greek, generally, you put the ha in front of a proper name. But we don't say the Jesus. We say Jesus when we're just referring to his name. So we drop it out of translation. But anyway, so the first line is pronounced ha Iesus me agapa. The Jesus me he loves. Or Jesus loves me. Second line is pronounced ha ti. See the rough breathing? Ha ti. Grafe, grafe, keruse, keruse. Now you notice on keruse you have two sigmas and we broke between the two, same as in English. Notice also that the rho, a single consonant, a consonant all by itself, goes with the following vowel. It's not care, it's keruse. But also, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a bit into what the rules are going to be, but notice on grafe that gamma rho are two consonants together, but they can be pronounced together, so they're kept together with the following vowel, grafe. Okay, so hati means because, grafe, scripture, keruse, it says. So because scripture says. The third line is pronounced, starts with the word paideia, Okay, Alpha Yoda is a diphthong, so you keep it together. Paideia, and then asin, asin, auto, auto. Children are to him. So say it again with me. Paideia, asin, auto. In the last line, the words are pronounced a, the, nu, C. Again together. Asthenusi. And the last word, do na tai. Do na tai. Asthenusi means they are weak, and do na tai means he is strong, he is able. So let's say all four lines together. Ha Iesus me agapa. Ha ti grafe keruse semicolon, paidea asin auto asenusi dunatai. Good. Okay, we'll go to the chorus, and you can see that the Greek word for yes is nai. And so the chorus goes, nai iesus agapa, nai iesus agapa, nai iesus agapa, and then hey, Grafe, Keruse. Yes, Jesus loves. I had to leave the me out because it didn't fit the song. 
But that's okay in Greek. You can do that in poetry. You can leave words out. Yes, Jesus loves. Yes, Jesus loves. The scripture says. Very good. Did you get that down? Okay, let's look at the slides now without all the helps and see how you're doing. Same with me out loud. Ha Jesus me agapa ha ti grafe ke ruse paidia asen alto asenusi dunatai nai Jesus agapa nai Jesus agapa nai Jesus agapa he grafe ke ruse <laughs> It's hard to sometimes get the accents down because I'm kind of singing the song in my head. But anyway, that's the Jesus Loves Me song. And you should be playing that uh, tape over and over and over again until you get those words firmly in your head. Okay? All right. Let me do one other thing. And this is kind of fun. And that is people are going to find out you're learning Greek and they're going to say, Oh, say something in Greek. Well, I've got some words that uh, you can say. We can sing a song, I guess. But let me give you a couple of words here, and then at the end of this discussion, uh, I'll give you some more vocabulary words. But this is the word ichthus. This is the Greek word for fish, ichthus. And the fish was used uh, end of the first century, beginning of the second, as a symbol of Christianity, as an indication that you were a Christian. And so the question you might be asking is, well, why a fish? <laughs> why a fish? Well, it has to do with an acronym based on the Greek word ichthus, okay? So let's work through the acronym and you'll see it. The iota stands for Iesus, Jesus. The he stands for Christos, Christ. The theta comes from the form theu, which means of God. And then the upsilon is from the word for son, Huyas. Now, earlier when I said the word sun, you didn't know about breathing, so I just pronounced it huyas. But it does have a rough breathing, so it is technically pronounced huyas. And theu huyas means of God, son, or son of God. And then the last word has the sigma from soter, which means savior. So if you identified yourself as a Christian with a fish, you were saying that you are using ichthus, that you were uh, a follower of Jesus Christus, okay, Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, Theu Huyas, and that he is, in fact, your Savior here, Soter. So anyway, that's kind of fun to be able to explain to people and show that you're learning Greek. Okay, well, that's it for the slabification. And again, I'm, I'm really hoping, and my experience in class has been, is that pretty quickly people pick this up. But for people who want the rules, let's go through the rules quickly, okay? The rules for slabification. The first rule is that there is one vowel or diphthong per syllable. Now, you see that there are five vowels in this word. Now, there actually aren't any diphthongs in this example, but there are five vowels, so you have to have five syllables. So it's pronounced ake-ka-a-men, okay? We have heard it means uh, ake-ka-a-men. The second rule says that if you have two consecutive vowels that do not form a diphthong, that you syllabify between those two vowels. Epsilon and alpha don't form a diphthong, so you have to divide the word between them, have to syllabify between them. And so this word is pronounced etheasamitha. Etheasamitha. The next several rules have to do with consonant clusters. And if I talk about a consonant cluster, it means two or more consonants in a row. So you have single consonants, which means you have a consonant that's followed by a vowel, not followed by another consonant, or you have a consonant cluster, two or more consonants in a row, okay? So rule three is that a single consonant by itself, in other words, it's not part of a cluster, is going to go with the following vowel. So this form means we have seen, it's heorakamen, the rho, kappa, and mu are single consonants, and so they're going with the following vowel, heorakamen. Rule four is that if you have a consonant cluster that cannot be pronounced together, okay, you have to syllabify between them. You can't say the mu and the p sound together, so you have to syllabify between them. So this word is pronounced emprasthen. 
Now the sigma and theta can be pronounced together, that's rule of five, so that they stick together, but the mu and p can't, so it's m pros then. Rule of five then is that a consonant cluster that can be pronounced together, like the sigma theta, goes with the following vowel. He and rho can be pronounced together, sigma and tau can be pronounced together, and so this word is pronounced Christos, Christos, okay? Okay, a couple of other rules. Rule six is that double consonants are divided. We've already seen this, but here's the Greek word parousia, but you have two rows in a, to, together, and so they're divided between them. And the seventh rule of syllabification probably doesn't help you a lot right now, because it's saying if you have a compound word, in other words, a word that's made up of two words, and again, you don't know what the words are yet, so you don't know if a word's compound. But anyway, the rule is that if you have a compound word, that it's syllabified between the two words that make up the compound form. So anti is a word, and Christos is a word. It's, we put them together, and we get antichrist, and it's pronounced antichristos. So that's it for the rules, but again, hopefully you'll just be saying this enough over and over again that it becomes natural for you. Now what I like to do at the end of lessons is to summarize what we've learned. So let's take a look in summary what we've learned. Well, we've learned about diphthongs. It's when you have two vowels, and the second one is the odor upsilon, and they are pronounced together, they make one sound. We learned about breathings that you're gonna have a smooth breathing over an initial vowel that does not affect pronunciation, and you can have a rough breathing over an initial vowel or row that adds an H sound. We learned about accents, the acute, grave, and circumflex, and all that we're gonna do is make sure we consistently stress the accented syllable. And we learned the four punctuation marks, the period and the comma in Greek are the same as in English, but the Greek semicolon is a raised dot, and the Greek question mark looks like the English semicolon. And we also looked at syllabification, we just practiced it, and then we learned the seven rules. So, there you have it for this lesson. But I, you know, you've been learning some vocabulary, and again, people are gonna ask you, well, say something in Greek. So, let me just go over some of the words that you've learned, and let's make sure you're syllabifying them properly, pronouncing them properly, and they're, they're fun words to learn, okay? I think the first word that you learned was the Greek word for angel, which is angelos. You have that gamma nasal there. The Greek word for apostle is apostolos. We learned the Greek word huper. It's actually a preposition that can mean in behalf of or above. It's welcome to prepositions. They have a wide range of meaning. We learned the Greek word for Jesus. It's Iesus. Greek word for Christ is Christos. And the Greek word for God is Theos. Now we learned the form Theou in the acronym for Ichthus. But Theou means of God. Theos is the basic form of the word that means God. We learned the Greek word for son, which is Huios. And the Greek word for savior is Soter. And finally, let me teach you just one more Greek word. It's really easy. Go ahead and say it out loud to yourself. Yeah, this is the Greek word amen. It's pronounced amen. And actually, in other languages, I've heard it more frequently as amen than as amen. So it's coming to the other languages pretty directly. So amen is how you say amen in Greek. Okay, very good. That's the lesson on pronunciation. And we learned a few other things as well. Good job.